Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hoga With It. Today we're doing another con Marie with me. It's historical fiction today. Let's get into it. So I have 24 books on this historical fiction bookshelf and I need to dwindle it down to 20. If you don't know and you've been not on my channel before, um, I'm doing a whole series called Colin Murray With Me where I declutter my bookcase because it's a hot mess and kind of overwhelming when I go to it. So I wanted to declutter it uh, and get it into a better place just for me. Um, so I have rules for myself and it's essentially however many books are on that shelf, it needs to come down to 20 or below. Below is totally fine, but at least down to 20. Um, and then I can put two books on my limbo shelf. And if I am really struggling with the shelf, I can go over to my limbo shelf and declutter from there instead of my shelf. So if I got down to like 22, I can go to my limbo shelf, take off two, and then we're even Steven basically. Even Steven? Have I even ever used that saying before? Probably not. Anyway, it's fine. We've got 24. Let's see how we do. First up is Tulip Fever. I really enjoyed this. This um, takes place in the, is it the 16th century? I cannot remember what century it was that Tulip Fever actually happened. 1632 um, and it's about a woman who marries this older gentleman that she's not in love with he's very much in love with her um, he decides he wants to get their portrait done um, he's wealthy um, and the artist comes and she kind of falls in love with the artist and it's about the dynamics this is a really good book it's hard to read because it is about adultery and there were portions in here that actually turned my stomach because I was so uncomfortable with the situation. It's really well done. That said, is it one of my favorite books of all time? No. And I don't think I really need it on my shelves. At the end of the day, I want my shelves, the books that I've read on my shelves, to be like, that was her in one way or another. Like, either it's a really scary book that scared me and I just enjoyed it or it's a book that touched my soul and this didn't do either of those. Um, so I'm just, I'm going to let this go and let someone else enjoy this. Next up is At the Water's Edge by Sarah Gruen. She wrote Water for Elephants, which I enjoyed. It wasn't like, it didn't blow me away, um, but I did enjoy it. Um, this is about a couple who, the father of the man, I think, um, don't, he doesn't support them. He's cut them off financially. Um, and essentially they have to leave. And they decide to leave to go and hunt down the famous Loch Ness Monster. I don't know. This one is a, is a peculiar one to me. I'm going to put it on my limbo pile and see where it lands in the end. The Thorn Birds uh, by Colleen McCullough is an Australian book. It's supposed to be a bit of like a soap opera. And I think I just want to keep it. I think it would be a really fun summer read, so I'm keeping this one. Next up is The Red Tent by Anita Diamond. I really love her writing. Um, I just adore her. I read The Boston Girl and just loved every single second of it. So I want to keep this. Um, this goes way back into biblical times and follows um, Dinah, um, Leah, Rachel, Zilpah, and Bilal. Um, so I, I want to read this. I've also got Himself by Jess Kidd. I read um, the Mr. Flood's Last Resort. It's also called The Hoarder in the UK. I read that and really liked it. Um, so I really want to keep this. This is about a man who is trying to find out what happened to his mother. Um, she died, I think, just after he was born. And there's a lot of mystery there. I really, really enjoy her writing, so I'm going to keep this. Next up is The Dove Keepers by Alice Hoffman. I just don't think I want to read this. 
just just like that I'm gonna just let this go because I don't think it's for me next is the good people by Hannah Kent this is about a small town in 19th century Ireland um, and they believe that um, one of the women has given birth to a changeling child who is going to be bringing bad luck to the valley and it's how the town people basically treat the child. It just sounds really interesting to me so I'm going to keep this one. I've got a Margaret Atwood here. I'm not getting rid of it. It's The Blind Assassin. Um, this is one of her more popular books and it's about um, it's a historical fiction where the war has ended ten days afterwards um, our main character's sister drives a car off a bridge and it's about what happened and dealing with it and uh, I just need this in my life so I'm completely keeping this next up is the narrow road to the deep north by Richard Flanagan I read this a couple years ago now and it was a hard read. I didn't feel pulled in a lot of the time. I, I There was one scene that really helped me through it all, but I, I think I gave it four stars. In the end, this does not really reflect me and I just don't think it's for me. So I'm going to let this go. Next is The Arenda by Joseph Boyden. Uh, this is Canadian historical fiction and we follow um, the kidnapping of Snow Falls, a spirited Iroquois girl. Um, her captor, his name is Bird, and he's an elder of one of the Huron Nation's greatest warriors and statesmen. Um, his family had been murdered, and Snow Falls reminds him of his daughter. And I think it's about the dynamics between the two, and it sounds really interesting heard a lot about Joseph Boyden and I haven't read him yet and he's Canadian and I'm Canadian so I should read this one. Next up is The Kitchen Boy, a novel of the last czar. It's super short. Okay, so then we also have The Lonely Hearts Hotel by Heather O'Neill. This is also Canadian, takes place in Montreal and follows I think two um, people who grew up together um, who were very close to one another and then they end up leading separate lives at one point. I'm not sure about this one. It's beautiful uh, but I think I'm going to put this on my limbo shelf and see where it lands in the end. Next is The Shoemaker's Wife by Adri Adriana Trigiani. A lot of you guys recommended this one to me. I'm not sure about it. Um, I'm just not quite sure, but I'm not really quite ready to get rid of it. So I'm going to put this on my limbo shelf and see where it lands in the end. I keep doing that. Oh my gosh, one of my favorite books of all time, The Light Between Oceans by M.L. Stedman. When is M.L. Stedman going to write something new? Because we all need that in our lives. This book, well, you've probably heard me gush about this book. It's about a couple who live on an island. Um, he's a light keeper and they struggle majorly with infertility. They have multiple miscarriages that are devastating. One day a boat washes ashore and there's a dead man in it and a living and breathing baby and they keep the baby and there are obviously results from that there's there's consequences in a big way and it just this is about gray to me um, and and about grief and I it was the first time I read someone else dealing with infertility in a really raw way and it made me feel known and I just I have to keep this forever Oh, this book just makes me smile. The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. We meet Cyril in this book and you just fall in love with him. He, You meet him before he's even born and he is a gay man um, in the, I want to say 50s-ish and oh, 40s in Ireland. And obviously it's many, many years that you follow him, but it, it wouldn't have been an easy time to be gay. Um, anywhere in the world and especially probably in Ireland that would have been really difficult 
it, this is funny at times. It is so sad at times. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And I'm keeping it. Brooklyn, um, I love this movie so much. I could watch this movie on repeat. And so I'd really like to read the book at some point in my life. So I'm keeping this. It's Clara Callan by Richard Wright. I really enjoyed this. This is a Canadian historical fiction about two sisters. One of them lives in Toronto um, and one of them lives in a small town in Ontario. Um, I read this when I was living in Toronto, which was the loneliest time of my life and missing my sister and I just loved every second of this so I'm going to keep it. Next up is State of Wonder by Anne Patchett. Um, this is about a scientist who's sent to Brazil to find her former mentor, Dr. Swenson, who seemed to have disappeared in the Amazon while working on a valuable new drug. And it's her exploration of trying to find this person. Um, Anne Patchett's a wonderful writer, so I would really like to keep this and give it a whirl. Beautiful Ruins is by Jess Walter and this uh, takes place in 1962 and we meet a woman who is an actress. She is dying um, and an elderly man um, shows up and I think it's about their lives together at, I guess the end of her life and how he impacts her and it just sounds really great. Again, it looks like such a good summer read so I'm going to keep this. Next up is Songs of Love and War by Santa Montefiore. This is a series. It's the first in a series. This is about uh, a group of girlfriends um, who in some way or another are connected with Castle Deverell. I think some of them live there, like their parents own it and then others work there. It takes place in the early 1900s and it's about their lives together. And I really want to read this. It just sounds like a, such a fun book. I'm going to keep this. Next up is Girl with a Pearl Earring. This is uh, was a really well-known book um, and I think there was a movie adaptation from this book as well and it's about Vermeer, the painter Vermeer and the woman who he used to like model basically for Girl with a Pearl Earring which was I think his most famous painting. Part of me wants to read this and then part of me is worried I'm gonna hate it. I might put this on my limbo pile and see where it lands. Bride of New France is about the, the Fille de Roi who came from France um, to uh, Quebec essentially and uh, they were basically brides for the people, the settlers in Quebec to try and build a population here in Canada. Um, I I don't know that I want to read this. I, I looked at the reviews on Goodreads and it was like really bad. Really bad. I don't know. I'm going to put it on the limbo pile and see what happens. Everything I don't know about I'm just putting on the limbo pile. The Secret Daughter of the Tsar is a um, historical fiction book about Russia and I just don't think I want this. I don't think I want to read it. I'm just gonna let it go just like that. Next up is The Piano Maker by Kurt Palka. This is about a woman who comes to a very small town and no one knows who she is. She just shows up. She's basically attempting to settle into simple life but she's got a lot of history from her past that she's leaving behind and she wants to leave behind, but the people who live in this town don't want her to. Um, I'm thinking of putting this on my limbo pile and seeing what I think in the end, but I keep doing that. I'm more hesitating to get rid of it. We'll see in a hot second. Love in the Time of Cholera. I mean, it's a classic. I should keep this. I should read this. Uh, so I'm going to keep it. And last but not least is Burial Rites by Hannah Kent. Loved every second of this. This takes place in Iceland um, when this woman um, is sent. This woman is sent to Iceland to await her execution. 
they don't have a guillotine and so they have to like have that sent in and she stays with this family and gets to know this family it's very much a slow burn but I really loved this so I'm going to keep it I've got four books that I'm ditching so I'm already in a really good spot um, and then I've got like five or six books for my limbo pile that I have to dwindle down to two I might keep some I might get rid of some let's see what happens okay so I have decided I'm going to keep girl with a pearl earring because it's so well loved and this is my fa my dad's favorite artist so I just feel like I should keep it I am going to get rid of three books piano maker bride of new France and at the water's edge I think they can go and then for my limbo pile I'm going to put the lonely hearts hotel and the shoemaker's wife so I have done very well for myself very proud of where I landed with all of that um, let me know in the comments below if you think I should have kept some of the stuff that I got rid of if you've loved them how do you think I did <laughs> what would you have kept I will talk with you soon bye guys